The Middle East Center at Georgia State University presents Arabic Grammar Unpacked. In this lesson, we will be discussing adjectives and how to make them agree with nouns in order to form phrases. Our goals here are to understand how Arabic conceives of the category of sifa or adjective, to learn about how adjectives must agree with their nouns, to learn how to make adjectives agree in gender and number, to understand how to form the jamat salim or sound human plurals of adjectives, this will be explained later, to understand that many adjectives have irregular human plurals, and to learn how to make an adjective agree in definiteness and case. The word sifa in Arabic is the word for adjective. It is a description, literally. The root waw sold fa means to describe, because the first letter of the root is waw. Sometimes strange things happen to it. In this case, it simply disappears to make sifa instead of wasfa, which is probably what it was long ago in time. Classical Arabic grammar thinks of nouns and adjectives as being essentially interchangeable, the same part of speech. Modern Arabic grammar tends to work a little bit more like English does. Most simple adjectives in Arabic have the fa'il pattern or wazn. Kabir is big, sagir is small, basit is simple. If you look carefully, you can see that all three of those words have the same wazn or pattern. Fa'il, we name it in Arabic. But not all adjectives have this pattern. Basit is simple, but mu'aqqad, literally tied up in knots, is complicated. So usually, especially in initial lessons, you'll see most of your adjectives having the fa'il pattern. Let's take a look at phrases. We can pair a noun with an adjective to make a phrase, or we can add several adjectives to the same noun. Ism sifa is the word for phrase in Arabic. It literally means noun adjective. In Arabic, the adjective always comes after its noun, not before, like in English. And the adjective must agree with its noun in gender, number, definiteness, and case. This can be kind of complicated at first, but if you practice it, you'll rapidly understand how to make it work right. For many phrases, but for no means all, this will make the words rhyme or otherwise sound similar. This is especially true in classical Arabic. Let's begin with gender agreement. Again, the word for gender is jins, which can mean sex or gender or type. It's a little bit ambiguous. When we learn a new adjective, it is mudhakkar or masculine by default. If you have a vocabulary list like the ones that come along with this lesson, you can see that the adjectives are given to you in the masculine form. An adjective describing a masculine noun, regardless of whether that noun represents a person or a thing, must be masculine. An adjective describing a mu'annath, or feminine noun, regardless of whether that noun is a person or a thing, must be feminine. This is true in the singular only. To make an adjective feminine, we simply add ta marbuta to its end. There are a couple of exceptions to this, but we're not going to deal with them today. Let's take a look at some examples of gender agreement. In the first row, take out the worksheet that goes along with this video. And if you haven't downloaded it already, go ahead and do that now. If we have bab kabir, we're going to put the jither of the word in the first row, and then we're going to make the adjective agree properly in the second row. Notice that in this very first example, I haven't added case markings to the noun, which is quite common in modern standard Arabic. Let's take a look at gender agreement. We're going to identify the jither of each adjective, the root of each adjective, and we're going to make it agree with its noun. So in the first row, if you download the sheets that come with this video, you can work along with us. We have bab kabir. In the first row, we're going to put the jither of the adjective, which if you notice that most simple adjectives have the fa'il wazn, you should be able to figure out as kaf ba ra for kabir. And since bab is a masculine singular noun, we need a masculine singular adjective. So we don't have to do anything to kabir to make it agree properly. It's already masculine singular. If we take the next example, ghurfa sagir, ghurfa is room, sagir is small. So we're going to make the phrase that says a small room. Remember, Arabic has no word for a or an. So the jither of this adjective should be fairly simple. If you can look at the example of kabir and move it over to sagir, we get sod, rain, ra. 
And since Ghurfa is a feminine singular noun, we could tell this because of its ta marbuta, Sagir must become feminine singular as well. So we add ta marbuta to it to make it singular. Ghurfa Sagira, a small room. In the next example, we have bint, which is girl or daughter, we'll say girl here, and jamil, which means pretty or beautiful. So we're going to make the phrase a pretty girl. We have the jither of the adjective. It's going to be the same wasn as the first two adjectives, the same pattern. So it should be fairly easy to find its jither, jim, mim, lam. And because bint is a feminine singular noun, because it represents a feminine singular person, even though it doesn't have ta marbuta, its adjective needs to have ta marbuta because that's the only way to make an adjective feminine. So bint jamila, a pretty girl. In the next example, we have Rajal Wasim. Rajal is man, Wasim is handsome. So here, again, we have Kabir, Sagir, Jamil, Wasim. The jither or root of the adjective should be pretty easy to find. It's Wow, Sin, Mim. And because Rajal is a masculine singular noun, the adjective remains masculine singular. So Rajal Wasim, a handsome man. Now let's take the last example. Dars is lesson. Mu'aqqad is complicated. So it's a little bit complicated to find the jither of this adjective. Remember that mim on the beginning of a word often belongs to the word's wazen, its pattern, and not its jither, which is the case here. So our jither or root is going to be ein, kof, dal, which is the root for knot, as in a knot in a shoelace. And dars is a masculine singular noun, so we don't have to do anything to mu'aqad to make a complicated lesson, dars mu'aqad. So making an adjective agree in gender with its noun isn't especially difficult for these simple cases. You simply have to remember when a noun is feminine, even if it doesn't have ta marbuta on it, like bint, the middle example. That's the only really tricky part about this. Let's try some slightly different examples. Again, we're going to find the jither of each adjective and make it agree with its noun. So dars is lesson, basit is simple. We already know that dars is a masculine singular noun, and it should be pretty easy to find the jither of basit. So it's ba, sin, pa. And because dars is a masculine singular noun, we don't have to do anything to basit to make it to agree. So now we have the phrase a simple lesson. However, remember our main rule of basic Arabic, non-human plural is feminine singular. So when we take dars, a masculine noun, and turn it into durus, its plural, it becomes feminine, but it stays singular. This is weird to English speakers and takes a lot of getting used to, which is why I'm going to emphasize it over and over again in these initial videos. So again, the jither is going to stay the same, ba, sin, pa, but now, durus, even though it doesn't have tamar bulta, is feminine singular. Why? Because it's non-human plural. So we need to add tamar bulta to it to make it durus basita, simple lessons. Again, Arabic doesn't have a word for a or an, so we'll just take the plural like that, simple lessons, durus basita. In our next example, we have mekteba, which can mean library or bookstore, depending on its context and the adjective jadid, which means new. In this case, it follows the same pattern as the rest of the adjectives, so even though it seems a little weird, its root is jim dal dal. And mektaba is a feminine noun, as you can tell from its tamar buta, so we need to make jadid feminine as well. We add tamar buta and turn it into jadida. So mektaba jadida, a new library or a new bookstore, again, depending on context. Let's take its plural. Mekteba wa mekteba wa mekteba mektebat. So libraries or bookstores. And here we have the adjective qadim. Qadim means old, but it cannot refer to people. If you think of qadim meaning ancient, it works a little bit better. So its root should be easy to find. Kaf, dal, mim. And mektebat is a non-human plural noun. So we make it feminine singular. So mektabat, even though it's got the at plural, which is often the human female plural, here it's non-human plural, and therefore it's feminine singular. So we say mektabat qadima, old libraries or old bookstores. And in the final example, we have fatat. A fatat is a young woman, a gal. 
an unmarried woman in Arabic culture. And Latif. Latif has a lot of meanings, nice, kind, generous, agreeable. We'll call her nice here. Its root should be easy to find, lam, ta, fa. And because fatat is a feminine singular noun, because it refers to a feminine singular person, we add ta marbuta to the adjective and make it fatat latifa, a nice young woman, a nice girl. So again, this is really fairly simple. As long as we stay within the non-human plural, we stay feminine singular, regardless of whether the original noun was masculine or feminine. It doesn't matter. Non-human plural is feminine singular. When we get into human plural, things get a little more complicated. But the very basics are pretty simple. And like a lot of things about Arabic, it's complicated, but not especially difficult. So if you're paying attention, you shouldn't have a very difficult time with it. Now let's move on to the next step. Let's make adjectives agree in number with their nouns. Remember, Arabic has three numbers, singular, dual, and plural. And so that plus the non-human plural is feminine singular rule will combine to make things a little bit trickier. So al-adad is the word for number. It's the word for number in terms of numbers that you count, and it's the word for grammatical number as well. So a mufrad, or singular noun, will take a singular adjective. A muthanna, or dual noun, will take a dual adjective. And the dual endings are the same for adjectives as they are for nouns. Again, classical Arabic grammar regarded adjectives and nouns as essentially the same thing. Non-human plural nouns will take feminine singular adjectives because, again, our rule, non-human plural is feminine singular. But human plural nouns will take plural adjectives. For most adjectives, we add endings to make them plural, but for a lot of the common adjectives, we use irregular forms because it wouldn't be Arabic if it weren't hideously complicated. But let's take some examples first. We'll use some of the same examples we used before because they're familiar. Again, we're going to identify the jither of each adjective and make it agree with its noun. So on the right-hand side, remember in Arabic, we always begin on the right, we have bab kabir, a big door. Kabir, its jither is easy to find, kaf, ba, ra, and we're not going to have to do anything to kabir to make it agree because bab is already masculine singular, kabir is masculine singular, no problem. In the second example, we have baban, and then the adjective sagir, sagir means small. Baban means two door. We don't use the number two to count any noun. Instead, we use the dual ending, which here is an. Sometimes it's ain, and that's a matter of case, and we're not going to worry about that right now. The jither for sagir is sold, rain, ra. And if we're going to say baban, two doors, we have to make them sagiran, two small doors. So we use the an ending here to indicate the dual, because an adjective must agree with its noun. Notice that in English you wouldn't do this. You just put the number two, and then the adjective, and then doors. Doors could just be small, no matter how many doors you had. So English is a lot simpler than Arabic in most respects, except for the spelling. Look at the next example. Ghorfatan and then Kabir. Ghorfa is room, so here we have Ghorfatan, two rooms. Notice that the ta marbuta that ends Ghorfa gets untied. Ta marbuta means tied up ta, and it turns into a regular old ta before you add the dual ending. So Ghorfatan, two rooms, and then Kabir. So Kabir's jither is easy, kaf ba ra. And if you guess that you're going to have to add the ending to Kabir, you're right. But not only do you have to add the ending, but you have to add the ta as well, because the adjective needs to agree in both gender and number. So we have to add ta marbuta to make it feminine, to make it agree with ghorfa. And then we have to add the dual ending. So ghorfatan kabiratan, two big rooms. Notice that they rhyme, just like baban sagiran does. A lot of times you will hear noun adjective phrases rhyming, and this is especially true the further back you go in time. Now, in the next example, we have the word ghoraf. Ghoraf is the plural of ghorfa. You want it to be ghorfat, but it's not. It's ghoraf. So ghoraf means rooms. And then we have sagir, again, small. So its jither is simple, sagir ra. But ghoraf is non-human plural. And of course, non-human plural is feminine singular. So guess what's going to happen to sagir? It's going to become sagira, because we have to make it feminine singular in order to agree with ghoraf, because ghoraf is non-human plural, 
even though it doesn't end with te marbuta, sagira must end with te marbuta because it is non-human plural. So ghuraf sagira, small rooms. And then last we have bintain, two girls or two daughters. And here we've used the ain ending instead of the an ending. And one of the things we're not going to get into in this lesson, and not for a little while yet, is the difference between the an and the ain ending. So bintain, two little girls. And then we have the adjective veki. Veki means smart or clever. So it only has three letters, so it's pretty easy to figure out what its jither is. And then we're going to make it agree. So remember, two girls are both feminine and dual. So we have to add what to veki before we add the dual ending? We have to add the ta. So we have bintain vekiatain. And we have to put the ta in there to make it feminine before we can add the dual ending. Again, this is tricky, but as long as you're paying attention and you do the drills and you get used to the rhyme scheme of it, you won't have as big of a problem as you might think you will. So let's take some more examples. So we're going to do exactly the same thing here. We're going to use some human plurals and see how this plays out. Non-human plural is feminine singular, but human plural is plural. So let's watch how this works. We have walad salih. Salih means virtuous or good, and a walad is a boy, sometimes a son as well, but usually boy. So the root for salih, the jither, is easy, sad, lam, ha. And since walad is a masculine singular noun, the adjective salih stays masculine singular as well. Notice that salih has the fa'il wasn't, not the fa'il wasn't that most of the other adjectives do. Most adjectives have the fa'il wasn't, but there are a lot of exceptions to this. So, in the second example, we have awlad. Awlad is the plural of walad. So, awlad means boys or sons or often children. So, we're going to make salih agree with its noun. So, this is human plural, so it counts as plural instead of having to be feminine singular. So, again, the root for salih is sald lem ha. And here, we're going to add what's called the jam muvakir salim, or the sound masculine plural. This means sound in the sense of safe and sound, not sound that you hear, by the way, because it's safe and sound because it is regular. So, salihun, we're going to add the un ending, which makes it fully human plural. So, if we say awlad salihun, we have something like good boys or virtuous boys. And it's human plural, so it gets to be truly plural. If you look at the next example, we have the word fatat. Fatat means young woman. So, if we're going to make her good or virtuous, she's feminine singular because she is a feminine singular person. So, all we have to do is add ta marbuta and make her fatat saleha, a good girl or a virtuous young woman, again, depending on context. But if there's two of them, fatatan, again, the dual is just going to rhyme. So, we have fatatan, we have to do two things to saleh to make it work. What are they? We have to add Tamarbulta first to make salih feminine, and then we have to add the dual ending. So, fatatan salihatan, two good young women, two virtuous young women. We have the ta for tamarbulta, which has been untied, and then the an ending for dual. But the human plural of fatat is fatiat. So, this means young women, or in colloquial English, gals or girls or something like that. So, again, we're going to make them virtuous. So, we use the jama' mu'annath salim, the sound feminine plural. Again, sound as in safe and sound because it's regular. And the sound feminine plural for groups of human women is alif ta. So, fatiat salihat, virtuous young women. We have the at plural, which is often the non-human plural of many, many nouns but is also the human plural for groups composed entirely of women. So, fatiat salihat, you can hear the rhyme, and usually when things are rhyming in Arabic, you're doing it right. Okay, let's move on to sound masculine plurals so that you can understand them a little more fully. The word for sound masculine plurals is jama, which is plural, mudhakkar, masculine, salim. Salim means safe or sound. And that's the idea here, is that these are regular. 
regular adjectives modifying masculine or mixed groups of people. Again, if there's even one man in the group, it counts as masculine because Arabic is a sexist language, like English mostly still is, too. Take the un or in endings, depending on case. They take the un in the marfu or nominative case, and in in the mansub or accusative, and the majrur or genitive case. In colloquial Arabic, which uh, colloquial Arabic is always easier than standard Arabic, the ending is always in, but in fusha, in standard Arabic, it's often un as well. Most common adjectives have irregular human plural forms. For now, learn to use the regular ones, and we'll substitute in the irregular ones as we learn them. Learn the pattern first, and then we'll learn the exceptions. So let's take some examples here. Again, find the jither of each adjective and make it agree with its noun. Well, our first noun is shab. Notice the double ba, the shadda. Shab means young man, guy, fellow. An unmarried adolescent or young man is the definition of it. And we're going to use some nispa adjectives here. The nispa adjective is when we take a noun and turn it into an adjective. So masr is Egypt. Masri with the double ya is Egyptian. So the root for Egyptian is easy. It's mim sold ra. And because shab is a masculine singular adjective, we don't have to do anything to masri Egyptian to make it agree because it's already masculine singular. Notice that here I've put in the case markings just to get you used to them. Most people don't use case markings in everyday speech, but the system isn't really all that difficult to learn. So shabun masriyun, an Egyptian young man. And the double dhamma, the tanwina dham, this funny looking character above the shedda, is the indicator that we are both indefinite and in the marfu, or nominative case. Case is something that Americans have a hard time, English speakers have a hard time understanding. Case indicates the grammatical role the noun is playing in the sentence. We don't do this with ordinary nouns in English. We do it with pronouns. We say, I hit him, but he hit me. We change the form of the pronoun depending on what the pronoun is doing in the sentence. The human plural of shab is shabab. Shabab means like guys or youths. Again, we've got the adjective masri, or Egyptian. So our jither here is mim sold ra again. And here we have human plural, and we know we're in the nominative case because of the tanwin dum. So we're going to use the un ending. So we're going to take masri and turn it into masriuna. So shababun masriuna, Egyptian young men or young Egyptian men. The un ending goes with the marfu case, and what tells you we're in the marfu case is the tenwin dum at the top of shabab. So now, if we're in a different case, the exact same phrase, but in a different case, we have shababin. So here we have young men again, and masri, but because we're in the majrur, or genitive case, as we know from the tenwin al-kasr, beneath the ba, then we're going to not say masriun, but masriin. This is a little bit difficult for beginning students to understand because it's kind of unnecessarily complicated, which is characteristic of Arabic in general. So what you should be able to do from this lesson is to understand that sometimes the ending is un and sometimes it's in, and gradually you will come to understand when you use un and when you use ina. It's a little bit difficult to do fluently, especially at first. So concentrate on the agreement now and get the case markings later. If we look at the next example, we have rajulun, a man, and he's in the nominative case, the marfu case. And let's make him a nice man. So we don't have to do anything to the adjective latif because rajul is already masculine singular. So all we have to do is add our case markings to make them agree, because, of course, case markings need to agree as well. So we'll make him rajulun latifun, a nice man, and we're done. We're in the marfu or nominative case. Now we have rajul wa rajul wa rajul rijal. Rijal is the human plural of rajul. Rijal means men. We're still in the nominative case, as we can tell from our tanwina dom. So let's make them nice. So again, we're going to have lam ta fa as our root for latif, and we're going to make them rijalun latifun, nice men. So the un and in endings always take a single fatha. That isn't technically a case marking. It's just kind of a pronunciation thing. 
So we're still in the nominative case, and we know we're in the nominative case because of the una ending. So rijalun latifuna. Oh, look, we've used our regular sound masculine plural, and we've done a great job. And then your native speaker friend is going to tap you on the shoulder and say, oh, that was perfect, but it's actually not latifuna, it's lutafa because latif, like many simple adjectives, has an irregular human plural. And they'll pat you on the shoulder and say, that's okay, you did a great job. And gradually, you will pick up on the irregular human plurals. The equivalent in English would be somebody saying, I have three childs instead of I have three children. You would totally understand what they meant. It just sounds wrong because of one of those peculiarities of English. This is one of the many peculiarities of Arabic. If you said, Rijalun latifun, everyone would understand exactly what you meant. But proper Arabic is Rijalun lutofa. And that's just something you'll have to get used to, and I'm sorry. Let's take a look at sound feminine plurals. The word, and again, sound as in safe and sound. Jama is plural, mu'annaf is feminine, salim is safe or sound. And salim isn't feminine here because it's not agreeing with mu'annaf, it's agreeing with jama. You'll get used to this as time goes on. Regular adjectives, modifying groups made up entirely of women or girls, human women or girls, that is, take the at ending. The at ending is the same for all three cases, and there are no irregular human female plural endings. So we've got that going for us. Where a human female plural adjective would take the tenween al fat ending in the indefinite mansub or accusative case, it takes the tenween al dom ending instead. This is probably something you could still get an A on a test without knowing. However, just for the sake of completeness, we've got it here. Let's take a look at some examples. Again, identify the jither of each adjective and make it agree with its noun. So taliba is a student, uh, someone who is requesting something is what it means, knowledge in this case. And we know that she's in the marful case because she has the tenween ad dum there. So qasir means short, as in a short video or a short person, just like in English. Its jither should be fairly easy to find for you because it's got the fa'il wasn't. So to make it agree, what do we need to do? We need to make it feminine singular, like its noun. So we make it qasira, and then we make it agree in terms of case by adding tanween ad dom as well. So talibatun qasiratun, a short student. In English, we would just say a short student, but we probably have to add in female to make it clear. Arabic makes gender clear for us. Taliba wa taliba wa taliba talibat female students in general, and here they happen to be in the majrur or genitive case because of the tenween al-kasr below the ta. Again, when we use nominative and when we use accusative and when we use genitive is something we will explore in a later lesson. It's not really that tricky. So again, we're going to use the adjective qasir, but here we have human female plural, so we need to add the human female plural ending. So, qasirat. Notice we don't need the ta marbuta. The at replaces the ta marbuta, unlike the dual ending that adds to the ta marbuta. Thank you, Arabic, for being complicated. So, talibatin qasiratin, short students. And Arabic lets us know that they're female. English would need a different word to do that. The word for woman is imra'a which is a very strange and irregular word with an irregular plural. So imra'a is woman, imra'atun, a woman. She's in the nominative or marful case. Let's make her tall, tawil. So here we have the jither, ta, waw, lam, because it's got the same wazan as qasir, qasir, tawil. Hear them rhyme, they have the same wazan. So our root is going to be easy, ta, waw, lam. And because imra'a represents a feminine singular person, we have to make tawil feminine singular as well. And this we do by adding ta marbuta. So imra'atun tawilatun, a tall woman. But the plural of imra'a has nothing to do with imra'a. The plural of imra'a is nisa, which really comes from the word for humans. So nisa is women. So nisa'un, the or some women rather. 
and let's make them tall. So even though nisat does not have the alif ta, the at, that makes human female plural, the way talibat does two examples before, we have to make tawil, human feminine plural, in order to make it agree. So it won't rhyme here, but it's still correct. We say nisat un tawilatun. And notice we add the at to a word that ends with the letter lem, and we have to use the lem alif character here. So this is something that takes a little getting used to as well. So nisa un tawilatun, tall women. And if we look at the next example, where we have the exact same thing, only here we have tanwin al fat over the hamza, making it in the mansub or accusative case, we say exactly the same thing, but here we add tanwin ad dom because for some bizarre long ago rule reason we can't add the tanwin al fat ending on the alif ta ending. We have to use tanwin ad dom anyway. This is probably something you could skip if you were really just looking for the basics here, and is mostly here for the sake of completeness. So nisa an tawilatun again would mean tall women, and it would what it would mean is that the women were doing something different in the sentence than they had been in the first example. Again, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of case markings in a few lessons from now. Let's move on to agreement in definiteness. Definiteness is a ta'rif, and it isn't something we quite do in English, but it's really not very difficult to pick up on in Arabic. Definite nouns, remember there are several ways to make a noun definite. The most common one is to add alif lam to its beginning to make it the noun. Definite nouns take definite adjectives. Indefinite nouns take indefinite adjectives. So that's pretty easy to deal with. And this is true regardless of gender, number, or case. It's a separate issue from gender, number, or case. The only way to make an adjective definite is to add alif lem to its beginning. There are several other ways to make a noun definite, but for adjectives, the only thing we can do is add alif lem to the beginning. Let's take a look at some examples here. We have bintun nahif. Nahif means skinny or thin. So, a skinny girl. Because nahif is masculine singular and bint is feminine singular because it represents a feminine singular person, we have to make nahif agree. What are we going to do? If you guessed ad tamar buta, you are absolutely right. So bintun nahifatun, a skinny girl. And the root is nun ha fat here. That should be easy because like many common adjectives, nahif has the fa'il wasn't. However, if we make al bint, the girl, we're going to make her skinny. We have to make her agree in two different ways, really three different ways in this sentence because we have to make her agree in gender because bint is a girl. We have to make Nahif agree in definiteness because she's the girl, not a girl. And we have to make her agree in case also, which is the easiest thing here. So to make her agree in gender, we add Tamar Buta. To make her agree in definiteness, we add Alif Lam. And to make her agree in case, we add the Kasra. So we have to say Al bin Nahifa, the skinny girl. We have added the Tamar Buta to make her agree in gender, the Alif Lam to make her agree in definiteness, and the Kasra to make her agree in case. So again, Arabic is really complicated, but not usually especially difficult. So Shabun, a young man, we're going to make him fat, Badin. Badin has the same wazen as Nahif, so it's jither should be easy to figure out. And see if you can make it agree. We don't have to do anything but add the case marking. Shabun badinun, a fat young man. We don't have the adjective young in here. Shab, the noun, takes care of it for us. So shabun badinun, a fat young man. But if he's the fat young man, and he's in the mansub or accusative case here, we say ashab badin. We're going to have to make badin agree. We don't need to do anything to make him agree in gender. We just add the fatha to make him agree in case. And then because ashab is definite, we have to make badin definite as well. So we'd say ashab al badin, the fat young man. However, shab wa shab wa shab, shabab, guys, men, youths, plural, human plural. So what do we do for human plural? We have to use the human plural ending. So ashabab it means we're in the majrur case. So we're going to not say badinun, but badinin. 
So we'd say, Ashabab bil Badinin, the fat young man. And that was great. And then your friend will tap you on the shoulder and say, Oh, it's not Badinin, it's Budun. So it's really Ashabab bil Budun. But if you said Ashabab al Badinin, everyone would understand you perfectly. And they'd be like, Yay, you, you're doing great with Arabic, by the way, it's Budun. Lastly, let's take a look at case. The word for case is al I'rab. And I've introduced it over the last few examples, so it shouldn't be that difficult for you, although case is tricky because we really just don't do it in English. You'll get used to it as we go along. An adjective is always in the same case as the noun it modifies in a phrase. Later on, we'll learn it can change in a sentence. This usually means they'll have the same ending, but there are an awful lot of exceptions to this that we'll pick up as we go along. Because many types of words behave a little bit differently in the case system, there will be many exceptions. Some of these are trickier than others, and we'll gradually pick them up, and then we'll do a whole lesson on the case system so you can see it all at once. Learn the basics for now and apply the exceptions as you learn them, just as you did with the sound masculine plurals and the irregular human plurals. Learn the basics, learn the pattern, and apply the exceptions as you go. People will forgive you. In fact, they'll be thrilled you're learning Arabic at all. Let's take a look at some examples. Again, find the jither of each adjective and make it agree with its noun. So we have darsun sahl. Sahl means easy, and dars is lesson. So we're going to make an easy lesson here. Dars is already masculine and singular and indefinite. So sahl is going to remain masculine, singular, and indefinite. So all we need to do is add its case marking. So darsun sahlun, an easy lesson. Remember, Arabic has no word for a or an. If we say ad dars, and we want to use the adjective basit, simple, we want to make the simple lesson. So dars is masculine and singular, and it's in the mansub or accusative case here. We know this because of the fatha. So we're going to make basit agree in terms of definiteness, the only way we can do this is to add alif lam, and then we're going to make it agree in terms of case. So we're going to make it al basit. So adar al basit, the simple lesson. Notice that we use the fatha of adars and make that cover over the alif in the alif lam. We want to swallow up the alif in the alif lam wherever possible and make words run together in Arabic. So adar al basit, the simple lesson. Now, if we say adurus, adurus is the plural of dars, so lessons, and because it's non-human plural, it is therefore feminine singular. We're going to take the adjective mu'aqqad, which has a different wazen from the rest of the adjectives we've looked at today, but that's no big deal because you can still use the same patterns to make it agree. So adurus is feminine singular because non-human plural is feminine singular. And for that reason, we need to add tamarbuta to mu'aqqad. Ad-durus is definite because of alif lam, so we need to make the adjective definite also by adding alif lam. And it's in the majrur or genitive case because of the kasra, so we have to add one of those to make it agree as well. So ad-durus il the complicated lessons. Again, the root is ayn kof dal, the meme is a grammatical prefix here. So Adurus al muaqqada the complicated lessons. We've added alif lam to make it agree in definiteness. We've added ta marbuta to make it agree in gender. And we've added the kasra to make it agree in i'rab, or case. In the next example, we have durusan. When we put a word in the indefinite mansub, or accusative case, its case marking becomes tanween al fat double fatha, which is pronounced n. But because of what's essentially a spelling hangover from the Qur'an, we have to add an extra silent alif as well. I usually tell my students that Tanween al-Fath has a bad knee and he needs a cane to lean on. A lot of times in printed texts, you won't see the Tanween al-Fath, but you will see the extra alif, which is extra annoying, especially at first, but you'll get used to it very quickly. So durusan, which means lessons, and then we have the adjective sab. Sab means difficult or hard, but not hard in the sense of hard as a rock, hard in the sense of difficult. So durus and sab, difficult lessons, or some difficult lessons, is what we're going to say here. We have to make sab agree totally. So first of all, durus, being non-human plural, 
is feminine singular, so we have to add it pe marbuta to make it agree. Durus is indefinite, so we leave sab indefinite. And durus is in the mansub or accusative case because of its tanween al fath so sab needs to be in the same case as well. So we have durusan sabatan. We have added ta marbuta to make it agree. Non human plural is feminine singular. And then we've added the tanween al fath And after ta marbuta, tanween al fath doesn't need a cane to lean on, uh, presumably because the tanween al fath is a comfortable enough chair. Again, this is kind of annoyingly complicated, but it's something you'll pick up on fairly quickly with a lot of practice. So don't worry about it too much. So durusan sa'batan, difficult lessons. And then in the last example, we have ashababu, the young men. That's masculine. It's definite because of alif lam. It's human plural because shabab are young men are people, so they get to be human plural. And it's in the marfu case. So we're going to add alif lam to wasim to make it agree in definiteness. We're going to add the un ending, the masculine human sound plural ending for the marfu case. And so we're going to get al wasimun, a shababul wasimun, the handsome young men. And then this is another case where your Arabic friend pats you on the shoulder and says, it's actually a shababul wisam. It's another irregular human plural. Again, this is one of the least important things to pick up right away. If you said a shababul wasimun, everyone would say, thank you. We, we appreciate that you consider us handsome. By the way, it's wisam, but don't worry about it. So again, here we have mastered how Arabic understands the category of siffa or adjective. We've learned how adjective must agree with nouns in gender, number, definiteness, and case. We've understood how to form the sound human plurals of adjectives, and we've become aware of the existence of irregular human plurals. This is a lot to digest. I suggest that you download the drills that go along with this lesson and try to do them at home. The answer keys are also available for download. Practice makes perfect.